Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hi guys, welcome back to English Corner Today, my friend and I will storytelling So, check it out Honorable parents, teachers, and my dear fellows who are here today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I'd like to thank to the Almighty God because of Him we all able to attend Agus Naini English Festival today. Last but not least, I wish my beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam salawat and greetings. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Please allow me to introduce myself. Hi, my name is Kirana, and I'm a sixth, sixth grader at the Al Kusnaini. And I'm here to deliver my storytelling about the hero that I love most. So, have you ever watched the Disney animated films like Mulan or Pocahontas? Yes, even if you haven't seen it, you will recognize that the main character of the story is a young woman determined to change their fate as a woman who are frequently underestimated. In fact, Indonesia has female heroes who are equally brave and have big dreams in women's rights in this country so that they can be equal to men. Raden Ajeng Kartini, or simply Kartini, is her name. A symbol of women's emancipation in this country and a hero in my heart, and perhaps in all of yours. This is the story of her. Kartini, whose full name is Raden Ajeng Kartini, is a member of Japanese nobility and the daughter of Jepara's regent. Kartini was born during the colonial era when men and women were not treated equally. Women were not permitted to attend school or work at the time. Many people believe that woman's role is limited to staying home and serving her husband. Kartini's thought on oppressive feudal traditions forced marriage for upper-class Japanese women, and the importance of education for girls began there. Even though she had studied at the Netherlands school until the age of 12, she reflected on how fortunate she was to be able to attend school in comparison to other girls in Indonesia at the time. Kartini, still actively learning on her own despite not attending school, her mind was racing with questions about women's movement in Europe. Kartini became interested in advancement of European women's thinking. That's why she read a lot of European books, magazines, and newspapers. That is what drives her desire to see indigenous women achieve gender equality with men. Kartini was also writing letters for her pen pal in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Kartini received many books, magazines, and even inspiration from her pen pal named Stella. This is my favorite part. We are here asking for efforts to educate the young girls, not because we want girls to be male rivals in their lives, but because we believe that the impact will be enormous, especially in terms of making them capable of carrying out their mission, which are to be a mother and the first educator of their children. That is a powerful message by Kartini's letter. Years later, finally, she accepted her parents' arranged marriage with Rembang Srijen, Raden Adipati Joyo Diningrat. But Kartini requested a condition before accepting marriage. Kartini was given permission to open school for women to attend. Luckily, her, hus her husband is the one who support Kartini's advanced ideas. So, yeah, Kartini's goal was to build this school so she could teach indigenous women to learn so she could achieve her goal as woman emancipation. Unfortunately, she died at a young age, only 25 years old, after giving birth to her son. Her best friend eventually published the letter she had written under the title Dari Kegelapan Menuju Cahaya. 
the large numbers of cut in his letter was also translated from Dutch to English. It also been dubbed in Sundanese and Japanese. This book were widely read and many women inspired by Katini's advanced ideas. Now, all of us who are here today feel the effect of Katini's previous struggle. This is the proof especially to a young girl to not be afraid to dream big. Now, all of us who are here today feel the effect of Katini's previous struggle. This is a proof, especially to a young girl, to not be afraid to dream big. We can become the next Kardini if we're diligent, if we're consistent, and if we walk in the path of goodness, God's willing. And that is a short story about Kardini. I hope it inspires you as much as it did to me. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello friends, my name is Naya Diandra And here I will tell you about a brave and confident hero from Surabaya Who succeeded in driving the Dutch back from Indonesia His name is Utomo, but we all know him as Bung Tomo Sutomo grew up in a middle class family He has a tenacious personality, a hardworking man with a great fighting spirit at a young age, Sutomo was active in scouting organization or KBI. He also joined several political and social groups. In 1944, he was a member of the New People's Movement. The year is 1945. The Dutch put their flag on top of Hotel Yamato. But then, two Indonesian young people climbed to the top and ripped the blue out of the flag, leaving only two colors, red and white. Then Jaramalabi is dead. They are angry and want to take revenge. Here Sutomo has led barisan pemberontak rakyat Indonesia in fighting the Dutch troops. They had issued an ultimatum that Indonesia must hand over all their weapons and surrender to the Dutch and English on November 10th. Bung Tomo said, We Indonesians are not afraid of your threats. Our motto remains, Merdeka atau mati. Days and nights they were fighting, thousands of Indonesian troops passed away. Indonesia lost in this war, but they were able to maintain their independence. At last, Bung Tomo has rest in peace while performing Hajj in the Mecca Arafa Desert on October 7, 1981. His speech left a deep impression in the heart of Surabaya people and I believe in our hearts too until today. For Indonesia and the heroes who have gone before us, Merdeka, Merdeka, Merdeka. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, I would like to thank the everyone who gave me a time to have my storytelling about Bung Tomo. Before telling, I am going to introduce myself first. My name is Jafar. I am from 4th grade A. Bung Tomo is a national hero from Indonesia. He was born in Surabaya, East Java. He was famous for his struggle against the Dutch colonialists who came to Indonesia. He has a family that cares about education. He was a hard worker to improve his condition. He worked to fix the economic crisis that was hitting the world at that time. In November 1945, he was one of the leaders who raised the spirit of the people of Surabaya. He was always remembered for his radio broadcasts when the war with the British soldier. That's all the story of Bung Tomo. Thank you for your attention. And finally, see ya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone, my name is Ceria Sasi Rahmadina. I'm from 6 grade 8. I will start telling about Raden Ajeng Kartini. Raden Ajeng Kartini, born on 21st April 1879 in Jepara, Central Java. Died on 17 September 1904 in Rembang, Central Java. She was a prominent Indonesian national heroine from Java. She was also a pioneer in the area of education for girls and women's rights for Indonesia. She attended a Dutch language a primary school. She went to further education, but the option was unavailable for girls in Japanese society. She came into contact with many officers and important people. Kartini wrote letters about her feelings and they were published in Dutch magazines, such as All of Darkness to Light, Woman's Life in the Village and Letters of a Japanese Princess. Her birthday is now celebrated as Kartini Day in Indonesia. Her encouragement for the education of girls was continued by her sister. Okay, that's all the story of Raden Ajeng Kartini. Thank you for listening and for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.